This is Marking Out. Pro Wrestling Talk by Pro Wrestling Fans. We Marking Out, y'all. Follow on Twitter. Pro Wrestling Talk by Pro Wrestling Fans. We Marking Out, y'all. Marking Out. Pro Wrestling Talk by Pro Wrestling Fans. We Marking Out, y'all. Spread it like this. Pro Wrestling Talk by Pro Wrestling Fans. We Marking Out, y'all. We Marking Out. Pro Wrestling Talk by Pro Wrestling Fans. Welcome to Marking Out Pro Wrestling Talk by Pro Wrestling Fans. This is episode 707. Thank you for listening. Go check us out over at MarkingOut.com, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, also on iHeartRadio, Amazon Podcasts, and wherever else you may be listening to those podcasts. Give us a five-star rating to go along with that five-star splash. Also buy a t-shirt, ProWrestlingTees.com slash MarkingOut. Give us a follow on Twitter at MarkingOut. Give us a follow on TikTok at MarkingOut. Give us a follow on Instagram at MarkingOut11. Don't forget the 11 in there. Don't forget don't forget the 11, but don't worry either because the logo will pop up and you'll see us. Give us a like over on Facebook as well. You can follow me, Dave the Rave, on all social media platforms at David PT, DPT. You can follow Chris at Chris Sween Dog on Twitter and CM Sweeney85 over on the Instagram. And you can follow Brandon at BTTG, that is with two T's, 161, over on all social media platforms. But I am here with Brandon. Brandon, how are you? I am doing awesome as always. How about yourself? I am doing great. Had a good reminder right there to lower my speaker. Lower my uh, my headset a little bit because you were a little bit yelling. A little uh, bit yelling over there. I don't know if I would angry. say yelling. <gasps> a little angry. <laughs> a little how could I be angry when, angry. well, I mean, I, I was going to say, how could I be angry with this weather? But uh, this weather's been on and off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's I love it. I love it. Beautiful. Well, around, I mean, beautiful. The present day is nice. The previous few days yeah. have been all torrential rain to the point where I hope my tomato plant is not officially dead. Oh, no. But it seems like my plant is on its way out. Oh, no. I'm hoping not. I. I didn't even realize. I didn't even think about it. I don't know why it's not. There's no hole at the bottom, so it's not draining. So okay. I need for it to drain. But I, well, I dumped all the water out, so hopefully it doesn't well, when we, die. Yeah, stay on top of it. I mean, when was the last time you you should really try to catch up with it? What does that mean? Huh. That was terrible. Huh. That was awful. Huh. That was awful. <laughs> Leave jokes <laughs> to people that are funny. No <laughs> offense. <laughs> but how was your uh, how was your week? It was fantastic. It was fantastic. How was yours? Oh, you should catch up to it. Well, <laughs> I didn't bring up anything with a tomato, though. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. Oh, my, so then you my got week was good. So then you got the joke. No, I there understood it. It was just he got terrible. the joke. He it wasn't it. good though. It wasn't. He admitted he got the it joke. It wasn't though. funny. I never Thank not you for admitted it. it. But uh, I grilled some burgers like I said I was going to last week. I made some onions in the air fryer. I think that's a, a pretty good thing I'm going to start doing from now on. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I grill at least. But that's really all I did. Just preparing for... I'm still debating on whether or not I'm going to watch All In. Oh, it's well, like why I don't... don't you watch a GCW to see Matt Cardona's return? Yeah, Matt Cardona. When is that? This weekend? Saturday. Yeah, so check that out if you're listening before then or catch the replay. I assume there's some replays there. Yeah, uh, go support Matt Cardona. But what else? Just go to Monday Night Raw. (laughs) Kicking off with Randy Orton. (laughs) And uh, Randy Orton spoke about last week and how he dropped Gunther with the, the RKO. And then Gunther came out and said Randy Orton should celebrate what he did last week because all it did was piss Gunther off and it'll never happen again. And then Kaiser came from behind. Randy Orton, Spidey senses senses, senses are tingling. He, he sensed it, turned around, and, and Orton started to attack uh, Kaiser. 
Gunther just watched that happen, which was beyond me. Yeah. I didn't understand that at all. And then Gunther started to get attacked, but then Kaiser came back into play, took out Orton's knee, and and uh, Kaiser and Gunther came out on top in that segment. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. They definitely came up on top of that segment. Um, I thought it was good for the opener. I like the heat that uh, Gunther was getting. But I just didn't understand why Gunther was watching Randy Orton just pummel Kaiser without helping him. Mm-hmm. True. I don't know if that's some sort of dynamic that we'll see on later on or what. I know we have seen similar in mm-hmm. the past between Gunther and Kaiser, but I thought they were different now. Hmm. After that, we saw Sheamus pick up the victory over Pete Dunne. I thought this was a good match. I liked the unique beats of the Bodron or whatever you call it that Sheamus did with Pete Dunne draped on the, the top rope. Yeah, that was definitely unique and a cool thing to do. I think the coolest part of Monday Night Raw, maybe the coolest part, the the turnbuckle pad spot where Pete Dunn had Sheamus, his hand and his arm inside the turnbuckle pad, Mm -hmm. and Sheamus ripped off the turnbuckle pad. To escape before hitting Pete Dunn with the bro kick. I don't think I've ever seen somebody do that before. It's very possible that we've seen that before. But I'm not 100% sure. And I thought, like, visually that looked pretty cool. Yeah, and it doesn't... I can't remember it. Yeah. I can't remember it happening at all. And then later on, Sheamus was interviewed. Kaiser interrupted. And he said that Jackie should be talking to the man who will be main eventing Monday Night Raw. And I believe it sets up a third match between Sheamus and Ludwig Kaiser at a later date. But uh, yeah, Kaiser, Mr. Main Event last week, and now Mr. Main Event this week. People were complaining. You saw that? That Ludwig Kaiser no, was booked see. on. Because Ilya Dragunov was booked on Main Event this week. How dare he be on Main Event? Blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile... Kaiser was just on main event, and now he's literally in the main event on Monday Night Raw. So, it's like, people are like, oh, it's such a demotion, blah, blah, blah. It's like the speed title. How dare they? Now, one of the members, the, the title holders of the speed championship will be in uh, one of the biggest crowds of wrestlers, this this uh, wrestling, I should say, wrestling fans in 2024. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, we had Maxine versus Ivy Nile go to a no contest. I was speaking about Ricochet, by the way. <laughs> um, oh, but Ivy good, Nile good spoke about, uh, she spoke with American Maid beforehand, and she said that she gave Maxine Dupree the chance to, to come join them. And then we get to the actual match. Maxine drop kicked Ivy Nile right at the, the get go. She turned her back on on Maxine. She was, I mean, Ivy was definitely, I guess, not taking Maxine serious. I actually don't know if they rang the bell at all. I don't think they rang the bell because she, Ivy Nile, Ivy Nile didn't turn around. It was a drop kick to the back. Ivy Nile turned her back on Maxine, and then Maxine yeah. hit that drop kick. They did brawl on the outside of the ring where Maxine was just tossing Ivy into every single thing that she could. Yeah, and Maxine was. Uh, very much so in control. And when Ivy Nile took over, all of a sudden, the power goes out, the Wyatt Six music plays, and Nikki Cross shows up in the ring, American Maid get into the ring, and then the Wyatts show up, they surround the the ring, and end up brawling with American Maid. And Uncle yeah. Howdy hit Chad Gable with the sister Abigail right on his neck. A crazy, crazy sell from Chad Gable. Yeah, great sell. So that sets up Chad Gable versus Uncle Howdy. Uncle Howdy's first match since 2019. Yes. Yeah, uh, Bo Dallas, if you want to say, technically. Yeah. Going to be next week on Monday Night Raw. His last match, by the way, was against Shorty G. Ain't that something? Jeez. But uh, I thought what they did in Maxine and Ivy Nile, what they were doing was fine. I wish there was a definitive outcome to that, but now you don't have to take a a loss from either one of them there. 
Um, I I don't know. I guess I would have not minded seeing more, but I saw enough. Yeah. After that, we had CM Punk come out with a strap around his neck, uh, basically confirming at Bash in Berlin a strap match. You didn't need glasses to see that last week. Mm -hmm. But before that, he mentioned the fans and how people traveled from all over the world to Fanatics Fest in New York City at the Jacob Javits Center to meet him and how they make bracelets and they take the time to make these bracelets for him. And it might be insignificant to other people. It might be a Taylor Swift thing, but he's Taylor Swift for men. And I will add, as the number one Taylor Swift pro wrestling podcast host, Taylor Swift is for everyone. And I'm also going to say that seems like everybody gets those bracelets now. Liv yeah, Morgan, I, mean, CM I saw Punk the wasn't fanatics. saying that he was exclusively receiving the bracelets. I think Taylor Swift definitely helped make those friendship bracelets very much so a big thing. Mhm. So, yeah. It's not exclusive to CM Punk, but CM Punk being Taylor Swift for men is uh I think it's a, a good quote to pop pop people (laughs) but Mm -hmm. is it true i don't know because taylor swift i think is also for men so true but cm punk introduced the match and drew mcintyre came out they went back and forth and uh basically over the the bracelet the said bracelet yeah and uh next up you had the Uh uh-huh i was just gonna say i'm looking forward to the strap match a lot of people are not looking forward to it but I'm yeah. here for it. I I need it to come to a next feud soon. Next up, you had the New Day teaming up with Odyssey Jones to pick up the victory over Final Testament before the matchup backstage. You had some hesitation from Xavier Woods with Odyssey Jones, but Kofi talking to Woods and everything, and Woods is finally like coming over for it. He's trying to get on board. I don't know if he is, though. I mean... I mean, yeah. I, he definitely is not. Xavier Woods said what everyone else was saying. And it's, he said, it seems like Kofi Kingston is trying to replace Big E with Odyssey Jones. And Kofi basically just said, don't you remember when you started New Day, what it felt like as a new guy trying to, to make it or whatever. Mm-hmm. As far as the match goes, we see Scarlett Bordeaux got involved. Karen Cross was able to get the advantage from from the the beginning or for the beginning of that and Odyssey Jones he gets tagged in instead of instead of Xavier Woods. They have that camera shot when Woods has his arm out, Jones has his arm out. Camera sees the hot tag to Odyssey Jones who takes out AOP by himself. Yeah, but Woods, I mean, Woods it was right there with his hand out. And he had his hand out before uh, Odyssey Jones was even back on the apron. Yeah. But, yeah, and Kofi then, tagging in Odyssey Jones instead of Woods. And Woods' face, you could see Woods' face, and Woods was just in disbelief. Yeah, and then they did the thing where everyone gets a move in at the end, which was, I would say, different than how it's normally done. So I didn't mind that spot. Normally I hate the move, move, move gimmick. But Odyssey Jones gets the win for them. And then off air, Scarlett t- uh, spoke to Karrion Cross. I think basically saying, let's move on from New Day. Yeah. We've planted the seeds already, or you've planted the seeds. I mean, and there is justification for it all with the moving on. I mean, we've seen everybody, like Xavier Woods is justified. You've seen Kofi Mania and everything that Kofi has done. You saw Big E as champion and until his unfortunate injury. The only thing that Woods did was he won the King of the Ring. And then there was that rumor, rumor of him being a part of um, Retribution, potentially. But then that was nothing. Was there? I don't remember that. Yeah, there was a big rumor that he was going to be the person instead of Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Uh, <laughs> what's his name? Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Muhammad. Muhammad. No. Mustafa Ali. Mustafa. Mustafa Ali. <laughs> Mustafa Ali. Um, 
<laughs> so, yeah, you can definitely have the justification of him there because he's never really done anything singles-wise. So, But again, I mean, not that much was done, unfortunately, with his King of the Ring. I think that's still a feat. Yeah, I agree. After that, we saw Big Bronson Reed pick up the victory over The Miz in a no-disqualification match, which Adam Pearce was totally 100% against Miz having this match. Miz didn't really want the match, but he was fighting for our truth and that's why he needed to have the match. So, I understand why Miz went into this. Adam Pearce, I like the aspect of him not being behind this at all. But the fans were very into this match. I liked every time Miz went and grabbed out a weapon, they popped big time. Obviously, mm-hmm. they popped big time the, the most for the table, but most of these weapons that Miz pulled out were used against him. And he went yeah. for that skull-crushing finale through the table, but Bronson Reed reversed it with a Death Valley driver instead. And then he hits a tsunami to pick up that victory, and he went for another tsunami after the match, but Braun Strowman makes his presence known. He runs out. Bronson Reed backs off. And I think that might, yeah, might be set up Yeah, I was surprised that he week. totally backed off, but it seemed like he was up for the uh, up for it. I think that's for next week, though. Is the match official or no? I'm almost certain. I'm not 100%, though. Hmm. Um. I don't know. I feel like I saw the image of them paired up, but I'm not too sure. Obviously, Bronson Reed has to go over, though. Yeah. You know, but how? But, I don't know. Um... I don't know. It's still going to be interesting to see how they build up, or if they build up, uh, um, Braun. Oh my goodness, I am tired. Whatever his Braun face Strowman. is, Braun Strowman. Yeah, I was going to say Braun Breaker, <laughs> Braun Strowman. Like it's interesting to see what they're going to do with him if they do anything with him. Well, but earlier in the night we had the Terror Twins cut a promo. Which they hyped up Bash in Berlin. We didn't even mention it last week. There's a mixed tag match between Dominic Mysterio, Liv Morgan, Damian Priest, and Rhea Ripley taking place at the PLE. Dominic and and Liv Morgan responded later on, and Dom challenged Damian Priest to a one-on-one match. Nobody involved, which Damian Priest accepted. However, Dominic versus Damian Priest ends up not happening. We Right at the get-go, Carlito, J.D. McDonough, and Finn Balor run down. Damian Priest was prepared for that and took them all out with a chair. Rhea Ripley showed up from behind Dominic, and then Damian Priest got into the ring. Rhea Ripley hit Dominic with a headbutt, and Damian Priest knocked Dominic down, and then Rhea Ripley cleared off the commentary table. Damian Priest sent Dominic to her, and she went for a riptide again, and Liv Morgan also, again, save Dominic, this time with a chair. And then the Judgment Day jumped on Damian Priest. I really think we'll see Rhea Ripley, I think she has to at this point, two weeks in a row missing the, the riptide uh, through the commentary table. I think she has to do that to Dominic at, at Bash in Berlin. Yeah, it's going to be a huge pop to to get that going. I think that it is a great spot. I like how... I like how Liv Morgan was able to get out of it and everything like that, too. Well, in regards to the commentary table uh, spot. Something very interesting. Nobody helped them. Fans really thought, which in my my opinion, I don't think was necessary. And I'm glad that it didn't happen because fans, you could hear them chanting. They really wanted Jey Uso. Yeah, they wanted Uso, but... They wanted you know. Sami Zayn to be making the save, but Jey Uso, later on, he said, uh, just because Sami Zayn... Say, well, I forget what he said. Something about just because Sami Zayn isn't going to be champion doesn't mean he can't be or something. So he's entering... They're, they're doing a tournament for the Intercontinental Championship to see who faces Braun Breaker, and he'll be one of the participants. Who else gets added to that, that tournament? I have no idea. Yeah, it's, I don't even know, but, yeah, I don't even know, but I did like the end of it. I like how Liv Morgan had Rhea Ripley kind of hand, handled a bit, which you don't see 
very often with Rhea Ripley, especially somebody the size of Liv Morgan. Um, and I like how everybody else just had Damian Priest handled. Um, I thought it was a solid heel segment. Yeah, very much so. Then um, but we had next... the Unholy Union pick up the victory over Damage Control and Pure Fusion Collective to retain the Women's Tag Team Championships in a very, very, very chaotic match. I couldn't watch this match. Sonya Deville got involved a few times. I think the finish was crazy. Where Shayna Baszler had the Kira Fuda clutch locked in on Kyrie Sane, and then Alba Fire hit that backstabber on Shayna Baszler, where Alba Fire, um, not Alba Fire, um, Isla Dawn hit the was it yeah Isla Dawn hit the backstabber, and then Alba Fire went up to the top rope for the Swanton to to get that victory, and I'm glad that they won. I'm glad that they successfully defended these championships, but I need more matches. Less chaos. I need more mm. matches where they're actually racking up wins to defend these titles. Yeah. I I, I agree with you. And what about that spot that uh the save spot? Which? Where where uh I think it was Oh Eo with Kyrie Sane. La- yeah, yeah. I, on the I don't know if that was a save. I don't know what that was. Michael Cole called it as a, a unique uh unique springboard or whatever. Yeah, it it definitely looked like a just a save. It didn't look like it looked like she was supposed to jump or whatever, but landed on her stomach instead. But it it worked out, and Michael Cole was able to sell the hell out of it. So yeah, shows you the importance of commentary too. Uh, And then in the main event, we saw Randy Orton pick up the victory over Kaiser, which was another good match. The I think my favorite spot of this was the fallaway slams, uh, the fallaway slam from from Randy Orton. I thought that Mm -hmm. was great. Um, Gunther showed up and Kaiser was able to take control of that. Randy Orton <laughs> did that backdrop onto the commentary table four times just to send a message to Gunther. And then at the end of the match, Randy Orton went for the RKO, but Ludwig Kaiser reversed it with a pin and Orton got out of that, hits the RKO to pick up the victory. And then Gunther jumps Randy Orton. They brawl. Randy Orton gets the upper hand, and that closes Monday Night Raw. And I'm really happy to see that um, that Kaiser is in the main event, and that he's in the main event against Randy Orton. I thought that this was a good main event. Um, I didn't mind it. Yeah, not at all. No. Um, but Moving over to NXT, it opened up with the Chase U celebration for the Tag Team Championships. Duke Hudson and Riley Osborne put Rich Holland over. Andre Chase thanked uh, Rich Holland as well because without him, he wouldn't be champion. They all hugged. And then Nathan Fraser and, and Axiom interrupted. Rich Holland stopped them to put Chase U over. And then Riley and Duke said that if Axiom and Nathan Fraser can beat them, then maybe they'll get a rematch at No Mercy and... Axiom and Nathan Fraser agree to that, and they were like, okay, we'll see you later on. And Chase, you were like, well, wait a minute. We don't get ready. We stay ready. They rip off their pants, a la, what's his name, Angel Garza, and have the match right then and there where Axiom and Nathan Fraser pick up the victory over Chase U. I think the crowd popping, by the way, for that that pant spot is is funny. Mm -hmm. But the match was good. It was an expected outcome. Yeah, expected outcome, but I, I'm on board with Axiom and Nathan Fraser not breaking up anymore. Well, who knows what? Maybe that big angle will take place at No Mercy. It could, but it seemed like it seemed to me like during this matchup that they're both coming off as heels now. I mean, instead, like you're going up against Chase U here at least. That's true, but the way that they just sounded and everything, they both sounded like they were just going to heal full blown heel turn instead of a pure breakup, which I thought was going to happen. I thought maybe Axiom would be the face, uh, or actually, I'm not too sure which one I thought, but definitely a breakup. But I feel like they're going to just maybe remain together as a heel tag team now. That ankle lock from Axiom to Riley Osborne, I thought was really nice. Yeah, I agree. After that, Wendy Chu picked up the victory over Lola Vice. Uh, when 
Wendy Chu had that sleeper hold locked in on Lola Vice. I thought that was going to be the end of the match, which would have 100% surprised me. But we keep going in the match. Wendy Chu eventually locks in another sleeper. Lola Vice uh, hits a, a backpack stunner on her. But then Kalani Jordan, the champion, runs into the ring, which I don't think fits her character. And Lola Vice accidentally knocks Kalani Jordan out, thinking she's about to hit that back elbow or back spinning fist on Wendy Chu. And it allowed for Wendy Chu to hit Lola Vice behind the referee's back with a pillow, which laid um, Lola Vice out. We would later find out it was loaded with the North American Championship. I mean, we saw the entire leading up to it, you had the backstage segment where everybody was talking to uh, the GM, uh, Ava, and you saw Kalani Jordan in the background, like, looking very frantic, looking, searching, going through every cabinet, every every nook and cranny that she could look at, look through. She was trying to find her championship, which led to her going out to the ring, realizing that Wendy Chu took it. And then Kalani Jordan laid out the challenge for No Mercy, and got her 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 title back from the pillow afterwards. Yeah, she was like, if you want to come get it, defeat me. But yeah. don't steal my championship. Next up, you had Jada Parker picking up the victory in a gauntlet to face Roxanne Perez at no mercy. Um, I didn't expect Parker to go over. I thought that Sol Ruka was going to win. I did not expect Jada Parker either. But before we talk about that, earlier in the night, Izzy Dame attacked Carmen Petrovich, which takes Carmen Petrovich out of the match. Ava replaced Carmen with Brindley Reese. And this match started with Ren Sinclair and Sol Ruka, which I wanted both of them in the finals of the gauntlet, and I thought this was going to be a, a gauntlet. It was like a more of a Royal Rubble-style gauntlet, which I, I wasn't aware that was, that was going to be it. But I liked the the modified bow and arrow from Ren Sinclair that she did. Adriana Rizzo was out after that. And um, also the first eliminated. Kind of surprising. Yeah. But Brindley Reese came out during a commercial break. Kendall Gray entered the match and eliminated Brindley Reese. The the spot that Sol Ruka did with the, the surfboard stretch to to Kendall Gray and and Ren Sinclair doing the the face buster could have been cooler, but it seemed like Soul lost the momentum holding Kendall Gray up. So that was unfortunate, but Jada Parker was the last one out. She eliminated Kendall. Ren was pinning pinning, uh, Jada, and Soul Ruka, I feel like maybe that's a mistake on Soul Ruka's part. She hits Ren with the Soul Snatcher. And eliminates Ren Sinclair. And that leaves Sol Ruka and, and Jada Parker. Sol misses a springboard splash. And Jada Parker rocked her with that hip attack to pick up the victory there. Yeah. So Sol Ruka, had you maybe not had Ren Sinclair eliminated, then maybe you wouldn't be the person that went on to win the match. But... True. We'll see Jada Parker take on Roxanne Perez at No Mercy. I do not, 100% do not expect Jada Parker to dethrone Roxanne no. Perez. I feel like it's very, very much so uh, only like a matter of seconds after that match finishes that we'll see Julia. Yeah, there's no, no way that she loses uh, to Parker during this matchup. But it has to be, the but like that next- has to be when Julia's there. Nah, it's possible. Uh, next up, you had Hank and Tank pick up the victory over the OC. Hank and Tank, a split of public enemy and reckless and wasted, probably. But maybe I, uh, public enemy ish. But yeah, I could have done without this match. I don't know. Yeah, it was fine, but I don't know. I and I thought the OC would win, so it was surprising to see Hank and Tank get that victory, but. Vic Joseph called it an upset, and I would agree with that. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. Backstage, you had Sean Spears, where he was interrupted by Idris Sanofi and Malik Blade, 
who said that Sean Spears preyed on Brooks Jensen and they see right through him. And then he mentioned like, oh, something, something like you with Brindley Reese. And they didn't like that. Sean Spears actually throws the first punch. Camera goes down. And I have to assume that Idris Sanofi and Malik Blade end up getting the better of Sean Spears based on the end of that segment where Sean Spears is laid out and Brooks Jensen is like, what happened? So I'm sure that sets up a match for next week, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know where they're going to go next with with uh, Brooks Jensen. Yeah. After that, you had Charlie Dempsey come out, and he spoke about Billy Robinson. He spoke about Lou Thez and catch wrestling. Who, which I thought was there was a funny moment there where Ren Sinclair didn't know who they were, and she like flipped the names, but. Charlie Dempsey, also even more funny because she worked for the NWA. So I feel like, obviously, like, Ren Sinclair isn't somebody who worked for NWA. But the actual woman who is Ren Sinclair was. Mm -hmm. So I think that's funny. But uh, Charlie Dempsey said that the D'Angelo's reign is over. And then Ren Sinclair said that Charlie, or Charles, I'll say, will defend the, the cup against anybody. And Obafemi showed up. Ren's reaction to that was, I thought, hilarious. She, like, immediately goes, like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And Obafemi said that the North American Championship is the most prestigious championship in NXT. And he won't hesitate to take that cup from Charlie Dempsey. And then the D'Angelo showed up. And Charlie Dempsey said that he assumes Tony D'Angelo wants the cup. And Tony was like, mm, I have my eyes on something else and alludes to the North American Championship. And then Tony D'Angelo had the family take out No Quarter Catch Crew because he always remembers, he never forgets that stuff. And Obafemi went to powerbomb Tony D'Angelo only to have Tony D'Angelo get out of it and hit that spine buster on Obafemi. Very surprising. So it seems like we'll have Tony D'Angelo versus Obafemi for the the North American Championship coming up. I mean, do you see Obafemi losing? No. I don't see that at all. Me neither. But but maybe we see something where Obafemi, let's say it happens at no mercy, Obafemi retains and then somebody from TNA slides in there and, and challenges him next. Not taking the the not taking the the North American Championship, but I mean, I could easily see somebody like Moose sliding in there and showing up to to face Obafemi. Okay. After that segment, we had Ren Sinclair leave the the Heritage Cup with Javon Evans. Gallus show up and saw that and questioned why he has the cup, and then they challenged him. To let them show him how how to be a real wrestler. And then Cedric showed up and Javon was like, I could fight my own battles. I don't know where that's going to lead to with the two of them there. But I assume we're going to see a match with probably, I would say, Joe Coffey and Javon Evans. So yeah, we'll see what happens so. there. After that, Ashanti the Adon has picked up the victory over Dion Lennox. I feel like both of them have been going back and forth backstage about with the uh, the women of NXT. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought it was a decent match. This was another one of those matches where we could have cut. Like, I didn't need it. Yeah, not necessary, really. Adonis won with the sweet chin music, though. And then we go to the main event of NXT, where Joe Hendry picks up the victory over Pete Dunne and Wes Lee to become the number one contender. For the NXT Championship, Ethan Page was on commentary. And I thought this was a very entertaining match. I knew who I wanted to win this match. I knew who the winner should have been. But I didn't know who was going to actually win. Mm -hmm. Joe Hendry doing the the double fallaway slam I thought was dope. But Joe Hendry was about to get the victory there. Ethan Page ends up pulling the referee out. And Joe Hendry hits a, a huge choke slam to Wesley on the commentary table. Hendry hits Pete Dunn with a choke slam. 
Ethan Page stops another referee from coming down coming down to make a count. And Pete Dunne hits the bitter end. And just when you think it's over, Trick Williams shows up, takes Pete Dunne out, and puts... I wasn't the, expecting Williams' involvement. No, I wasn't either. And he puts the original referee back in, Joe Hendry, a TNA superstar, will be facing Ethan Page a former TNA superstar for the uh, the NXT championship at No Mercy. So I'm, I'm excited for that. And just when you thought NXT was over, Zachary Wentz shows up from the crowd and attacks Wesley, and that's how NXT ends. Yeah, what, I mean, very chaotic way to end the night, you know? What was interesting... I completely, if I'm not mistaken, did Wesley not already challenge Wentz to a match for No Mercy? Didn't we discuss that? Um, I feel like that was already going to happen. I don't think so. I don't think they actually... I'm pretty sure Wesley was like, oh, No Mercy's coming up. That's perfect to, to face Zachary Wentz. I don't know if they ever made anything official or something. Maybe maybe they did and they, they just went into another direction. Because Wes Lee being in this match, to me, it really didn't make sense. But then we have that outcome where Zachary Wentz attacks Wes Lee afterwards. Surely that sets up no mercy now. 100%. It has to. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's, that's NXT moving over to SmackDown. The Grayson Waller effect opened SmackDown, and I had no idea what Alicia Taylor was going for when she introduced A Town Down Under until she obviously, I realized it was for the Grayson Waller effect. But Cody Rhodes was the guest. I liked how Grayson Waller cut Cody Rhodes' theme song off to get that heat. He also interrupted the So, what do you want to talk about? I thought that was nice. They tried to spin Cody using Kevin Owens. But Cody spun it as Grayson Waller using Austin Theory. They aired a video in return of Kevin Owens turning on all his friends, including Chris Jericho. So I'm glad that Chris Jericho was part of that. But Kevin Owens came out and said everyone had it coming except for Kofi Kingston, which he again later apologized to Cody for. And he called out Nick Aldis to make a tag team match. Nick Aldis made the match, and then he also gave Kevin Owens permission to get in the ring and punch Grayson Waller. Waller ends up throwing Kevin Owens into Cody Rhodes, maybe causing some disdain there, but it sets up the main event. We saw LA Knight pick up the victory over Santos Escobar to retain the United States Championship. Before the match, Los Otharios attacked uh, LA Knight, They got tossed from ringside, and then Electra Lopez got into Jessica Carr's face, so she was very happy to toss Electra Lopez to the back as well. I thought that was a nice spot. But Escobar, the match goes on. I like that that Meteora from the barricade to LA Knight onto the table. I thought that was nice. I liked that LA Knight did that double jump elbow drop again. I thought the match was very entertaining, and I think matches like this helps elevate that United States Championship. Backstage, Legato Del Fantasma argued after that, and Santos Escobar was furious with them for getting kicked out of ringside because they can't help him if they're not there. And then Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews showed up to laugh at that, and Santos Escobar said he's going to go talk to Nick Aldis and get that match set up for next week. Meanwhile, LA Knight issued an open challenge in Berlin on SmackDown next week. Uh, I would. Uh, I know he's on Monday Night Raw. I would like to see Ilya Dragunov step up for that. Uh, they aired a, a segment with Carmelo Hayes at the barbershop talking trash about Andrade. And Andrade showed up. He was held back, but it sets up another match between the two of them for next week. And I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that match. We saw the big three pick up the victory over the Unholy Union and Blair Davenport. I liked... The big three being dressed in different gears of Simone Biles. I thought that was pretty cool. But I think the Unholy Union did a very good job here with their their heel tactics. Um, And and keeping Bianca Belair away from her team. Until that hot tag from Jade to Jade Cargill. The fans exploded to see her get into the ring. 
That fallaway slam that she did to Alba Fire into Blair Davenport, I thought was cool. I feel like there were a bunch of fallaway slam spots this week that I mentioned. But Naomi got the victory over over Blair Davenport. Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair get a title shot in at Bash in Berlin. So I'm looking forward to seeing that rematch. And speaking of Bash in Berlin, they aired a video package for the history of WWE in Germany, narrated by Natalia. She spoke about how Bret Hart always used to tell her stories about how great the, the fans in Germany are. And I thought that was a really cool video package. I did not know that the very first Monday Night Raw outside of the United States took place in Germany. And I thought it was really cool they showed the main event of that that Monday Night Raw. It was British Bulldog versus Owen Hart for the very first uh, European champion. Very, very well done video package. It It's... I, I can't say it. Every time we see it on television, it's it's awesome to see Owen Hart. So I thought that was really cool. After that, Solo Sokoa came out with the bloodline and said that Roman Reigns is done. And he said he doesn't. it doesn't matter if Cody Rhodes retains. It doesn't matter if Kevin Owens wins because he's taking that title back to the bloodline. And then Solo made Jacob Fatu give his tag team championship to Tonga Loa and said he can't be tag team champion if he's going to be his personal enforcer, the Street Profits came out for their match and spoke beforehand, which BFAB, very interestingly, spoke uh, to Solo Sokoa. I did not expect that. But the Bloodline defeated the Street Profits to retain the titles. I thought the match was good. Jacob Fatu got, got involved behind the referee's back when Solo Sokoa distracted the referee. The Bloodline stole that victory. And then they jumped the Street Profits afterwards. DIY ran down to make the save at first, but they went for meet, meeting in the middle. Jacob Fatu held on to Johnny Gargano, and, and they ended up getting put down. We saw BFAB and The Way trying to check on the Street Profits and DIY later on. We also saw Nia Jax, Tiffany Stratton, and Pretty Deadly. Nia Jax basically said that Mia Yim is going to pay for what she did to, at the celebration last week. And Tiffany Stratton was super apologetic. She's like, how can I help? How can I help? And she's like, you guys can start by fixing my crown, basically. So they scurried off. Around the corner, you had Chelsea Green and and Piper Niven talking about Nia Jax. And Chelsea was like, I, I don't like talking about people behind their backs, which I thought was really funny because she didn't realize that Nia Jax was there. Nia Jax was just like, I'm in no mood for for this tonight. So she left. And that takes us to the main event of SmackDown. Where Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens teamed up to take on A-Town Down Under. They beat A-Town Down Under. I thought the match was good. A-Town Down Under, I think, proving why they're a tag team. And like Unholy Union, they showed off how they're good at being heels. I thought the hot tag spot with Kevin Owens is very interesting. Because everything after the hot tag took place outside the ring. I don't know if I've seen a hot tag spot like that before, but I liked Kevin Owens winning with the pop-up power bomb just to feed into everything that Grayson Waller said the other week. Afterwards, given probably everybody is scared, Kevin Owens goes to hand the, well, looks like he's going to smash Cody Rhodes in the face with the, the WWE Championship. He just aggressively hands it to Cody Rhodes and and is fired up to challenge A-Town Down Under to get back into the ring. I like that they're playing into Kevin Owens turning on people like that. So I don't think at Bash in Berlin we'll see anything like that. I think it will be friendly competition. But that is SmackDown. Going to take a quick little break right now and I'll be right back here on Marking out. Yo, this is Judah Friedlander, the world champion. This is not an imposter, the real deal. And you're listening to Marking Out. Why? Because I'm listening to it too. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Marking Out episode 707. Moving back to AEW Rampage from last week, it kicked off with the conglomeration, picking up the victory over the Butcher and the Outrunners. This match was all over the place and very chaotic. Mark Briscoe won the match for the team. 
You had Nyla Rose after that pick up the victory over Erica Lee, and I don't even remember if they mentioned Erica Lee being ringside in the opening match, but Nyla Rose basically just squashed Erica Lee here. Uh, After that, you saw Nick Wayne pick up the victory over Kip Sabian. Nick Wayne definitely got the better of, of Kip Sabian in this match. And he worked on Kip's shoulder throughout it. And Shayna Wayne distracted the referee. Kill Switch was able to hit Kip Sabian behind the referee's back. I wish the shoulder came into play for the end of the match because it was pretty significant in the match. But on collision, it was announced that the trio's championships will be defended in a fatal four-way ladder match. And I did assume that Kip Sabian would be involved. Because he's been kind of involved in that aspect there with them. But I'll talk more about that match later on. You saw Kyle Fletcher and Roosh pick up the victory over Kevin Matthews and Rhett Titus. I think the way that AEW treats Rhett Titus is absolutely bizarre. Kevin Matthews being in this match makes sense. But Rhett Titus, just it, it, it's beyond crazy to me. And then in the main event, you saw Top Flight pick up the victory over Maximum Male Models. Top Flight now dress like pilots. Except for Leo Rush. Leo Rush did commentary for this. He didn't partake in in the, the pilot gear. But I think this is the exact sort of match that, with also the same gear, if it took place in WWE, the fans would tear this apart. And because it was such a comedic match, I don't think this should have been the main event. And But if I had to pick a, a main event that it should have been, I would probably say it was Nick and, and Kip Sabian. On AEW Collision, you saw Britt Baker pick up the victory over Harley Cameron. I thought this match was decent. Harley Cameron, I think, definitely improves every single time I see her in the ring. And the only thing I would have changed about this was that I think Britt Baker should have won with Lockjaw. Because she tried to lock it in last week and couldn't get it done due to Camille. So there was no, there's like a pause in that being part of the story. Not to skip ahead on Dynamite or anything, there wasn't any sort of lockjaw attempt. But Mercedes Monet and Camille showed up after this. Britt Baker went to hit Camille with the kendo stick. She took it away, broke it over her knee, and then she knocked Britt Baker. Clean out. And Mercedes Monet posed over Britt Baker. I'll talk more about this in a second. You had Dustin Rhodes and Sammy Guevara pick up the victory over Undisputed Kingdom to become the new Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. I do not understand this booking at all. Because it's not like we've seen any of this on TV, really. It's just been on Ring of Honor. Sammy hasn't even been on television since February, if I'm not mistaken. And it makes even less sense, given that Dustin literally just won the trios championships three three weeks ago. And based on this being Dustin and, and Sammy's second match together, I have to assume that there are other teams in Ring of Honor that were way more deserving to take those titles from the kingdom After the kingdom took those titles from MJF. It was such a big storyline. And then fizzled out. Beyond quickly. So that really sucks that that they won the titles. And it wasn't another team that, that needed it, I guess. And then you had all the outside interference in this match that took place. It was a big mess. I was not a fan of this at all. After that, Hologram picked up the victory over Angelico. I think Angelico is a good opponent for Hologram. And I'm glad that we got another singles match from Hologram again. Because it was more enjoyable seeing him in this than than tag with random partners. But it's annoying that Angelico doesn't have any TV wins in AEW. And I also wish that the ending was different because... I almost always hate that pin, pin, pin ending. And in this case, I was not a fan of that. 
We saw Jack Perry pick up the victory over Danny Orion. After the match, Jack Perry put him in a body bag, introduced a new design for the TNT Championship. I don't think this title needs another design, especially not when MJF literally just introduced a new version of a title a few weeks ago. But Jack Perry released a video, or somebody released a video, of Jack Perry making that title himself. So I think that's pretty cool that that we got to see the process of that. I assume it was a replica of the TNT Championship, and and it it the process I thought was pretty cool. Do we need it? I think it's like seven designs in in four years, something like that. I don't think we need that. After that, Claudio picked up the victory over Leo Rush. This was a fun match. I liked getting to see the strength of Claudio versus the quickness of Leo Rush. And in the end, we saw Claudio get out of the way of the frog splash and hit Leo Rush with that uppercut to pick up the victory. Mariah May picked up the victory over London Dior. This was a very, very quick match. I really don't think it does anything to put her up against Tony Storm. Like, how do you have her go from getting wins over Hikaru Shida and Willow? to doing matches against women not in the company. To build her up to face Tony Storm, to me that makes no sense at all. Main event saw FTR versus the Acclaim go to a time limit draw. I am very glad that I was wrong last week in thinking that FTR was just going to take this and then go on to Wembley because who cares about the Acclaimed right now in this storyline. But at least the Wemb- uh, at least the Acclaim don't get screwed out of a title shot. They don't get screwed out of Wembley. So, and this match was really good. It was very enjoyable. Billy Gunn tried to broker peace afterwards, but Dax struck him and they all brawled. And that closed out the show. Moving over to AEW Dynamite taking place in Wales for the very first time overseas. Very, very hot crowd. Very, very good crowd on Dynamite. The TBS Championship contract signing with Britt Baker and Mercedes Monet opened the show. They both agreed to no physicality during the segment. But when all that was said and done, Britt Baker said that she agreed to not hit Mercedes. It doesn't apply to Camille. She clocks Camille with the microphone. But then she goes and throws the the contract at Mercedes. And hits a crossbody off the table onto both of them. Camille and, and Mercedes got away. And Britt Baker held up the title. I think this segment was really too long. And we hardly got any new information from this. There were some good lines here and there. But out of that, it didn't make sense. She was not supposed to hit Mercedes and then ends up hitting Mercedes. I will say later on, somebody gets fined for doing that. Does she get fined for doing that? I don't know. After that, Chris Jericho picked up the victory over Tommy Billington. Jericho cut a promo beforehand saying that Billington doesn't have the right to call himself Dynamite Kid. I think it was a very obvious outcome that Chris Jericho would win this. Billington is 0 for, I think, 3 at this point now. But I think it's a good match for him to have I just wish there wasn't outside interference. Afterwards, Hook came out and got in Chris Jericho's face, but Big Bill attacked him, dropped him. That was the end of that. I think that could be like writing on the wall there. Uh, And then we saw Tony Storm pick up the victory over Soraya to to retain the championship. This was also, I believe, to see if, if Soraya could be booked for all in. And this match had some messy spots. I also feel like a match like this one-on-one between the two of them should have been much bigger than what we got. Especially, it was, I, I didn't, it was like comedic. It was way more comedic than I would have wanted from this. But somebody, I forget who I saw suggest saying that now that Soraya is not booked for all in, she goes, she demands a match, boom. Jamie Hayter returns, everybody marks the hell out. Obviously, Soraya loses, but After this match, Mariah May attacked Tony Storm. Maybe she's retaining the title. 
We had the face-off between Will Ospreay and MJF. Ospreay ends up attacking MJF, and they brawled. Security broke it up, which is funny because they had security surrounding the ring instead of being between the two of them. But Will Ospreay ended up being all bloodied from this. A lot of people were going nuts over this segment. Uh, I think it could have been shorter, but MJF, I think, cooked in this segment. What, I don't understand. People are like, Will Ospreay's a god on the microphone. MJF blew him out of the water here. And then later on, Brian Danielson told Will Ospreay to do it. I think alluding to the Tiger Driver 91. We saw Okada versus Claudio for the Continental Championship go to a time limit draw. I thought it was interesting to have that because they just had a draw with the acclaimed and FTR, but this was a very good match. It was very entertaining. I don't think there were dull points in this match. I just now, going to all in, it seems like they're, I mean, it not seems, they will be forgetting about this match going to a, a time limit draw. I do think that at all out, this match will take place again. But, I think it's goofy, especially the, the situation that Claudio is in for All In, which I'll talk about in a moment. Main event saw FTR and Darby Allen pick up the victory over the Elite. Very, 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 very much so beyond chaotic. I don't think we had to have this just days before the pay-per-view. But the acclaimed came out afterwards and just said that neither of these teams can beat them. The end of the show had Swerve and Brian Danielson. Nigel McGuinness was moderating this, which, storyline-wise, is he the right person to moderate this when he's such, he's so against Brian Danielson? But the outcome of this, Swerve brought up Brian Danielson's family and crippling him in front of his family at Wembley. And Brian Danielson ran down, hit those, the, the psycho knee or whatever you call it, And Brian, super fired up, spoke about the match. And out of all of that, Swerve was up like he didn't just get hit with the knees. I hated that. Why does that? I don't understand how that happened. But that's the end of Dynamite. Moving over to predictions for All In taking place. Wembley Stadium, London, England. Uh, We have the the kickoff show match, pre-show, buy-in. Chris Statlander and Stokely will be taking on Willow Nightingale and Ishii. The winning team chooses the stipulation of the match between Willow and Chris Statlander at All Out. It's very hard for me to say that that Chris Statlander and Stokely somehow won't get this victory here. But at the same time, Stokely going up against Ishii like literally makes no sense. But I'm going to say Chris Statlander and Stokely somehow get that victory. You have Timeless Tony Storm versus The Glamour, Mariah May for the AEW Women's Championship. Storyline, in this storyline, thinking about it, it should be Mariah May. Given what happened on Dynamite, I feel like Tony Storm is going to retain. So I'm going to say Tony Storm retains. For the AEW American Championship, MJF versus Will Ospreay. I think writing is on the wall there. You're going to see Will Ospreay probably take that championship, dump it in the trash like uh, MJF did to the International Championship. I think Will Ospreay is taking this victory. You got Jack Perry versus Darby Allin in a coffin match for the TNT Championship. I hope Jack Perry retains. He very much so needs a victory there. Mercedes Monet taking on Dr. Britt Baker for the AEW TBS Championship. Mercedes. Mercedes needs to win this. For the AEW, a future AEW World Championship match. Casino Gauntlet. Orange Cassidy, Mark Briscoe, Hangman, Kyle O'Reilly, Evil Uno. A whole bunch of other surprises, I'm sure. Maybe Ricochet, probably Ricochet. Bobby Lashley could show up, who knows? I think Hangman Hangman has to win this. 
how he took the the days just days before until being booked for the actual pay-per-view is way beyond me. That in a, in itself doesn't make sense, but I Hangman needs to win this. Orange Cassidy should not be in this match. You have Chris Jericho versus Hook, last chance match for the FTW Championship. If Hook loses, he can never challenge for that title again as long as Jericho is champion. I think it's Hook. Hook got laid out. It seems like Hook will take the championship. Probably stay with AEW, maybe. I don't know. If what happened with Hook on Dynamite didn't happen, I would maybe have said Chris Jericho retains. After that, the Young Bucks and uh, FTR and the Acclaimed have a three-way title match for the AEW Tag Team Championships. I'm, uh, this is difficult. I, I'm, I, I don't know. This is very difficult. I'm, I'm going to probably be wrong. I'm going to say FTR. A four-way London ladder match for the AW Trios Championships. The Patriarchy defending the titles against the Bang Bang Gang, House of Black, and the team that was named, I believe, on either Rampage or Collision, Claudio, Wheeler Yuta, and Pac. So it seems like this was probably supposed to be Death Triangle. It seems like... Penta and Phoenix are done with AEW. How it makes sense that Pac is going to team with the Blackpool Combat Club when everything that went down between them happened makes no sense. I don't know if they explain it on the TV program or what. I do not know. It doesn't make sense. I just feel really bad for Pac in this whole situation where It seems like it was supposed to be Death Triangle. It seemed like Pac, maybe months ago or a few weeks ago or so, it seemed like Pac was even going to have a singles match, if if I'm not mistaken. It seemed like they were kind of building towards that. So, who was probably going to be retaining is the Patriarchy. Unless House of Black takes it, I don't know. Either way, I, I want the antics to be done in what I assume is going to be the main event title versus career for the AW championship swerve versus Brian Danielson. I got to say Brian Danielson. I can't see him being done yet. And if he is done, I, I hope we get some sort of legends deal with him in WWE to have him back in the video games would be dope. So, I'm just going to say Brian Danielson wins the AEW Championship because I really think the AEW Championship needs that. So, those are my predictions for AEW All In. Hey, Brandon, got any shout outs? Hey, the Hiff, we should listen to Brandon's shout outs. The first shout out goes to Jackpot, which is a new movie on Amazon Prime starring Aquafina and John Cena. Simu Liu is also in it. Uh, there are some other good cameos. Are you aware of this film at all? Have you seen the, the commercial, the trailer? I saw the commercial. The commercial, it looked funny. It takes place in 2030. And California has a lottery where the person that wins the grand prize lottery has to survive until sundown. And if they die, the person that kills them gets the money. But if they survive until sundown, then they get the full jackpot. And I enjoyed this movie. I thought John Cena was like the perfect person for that role. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminded me of the movie with uh, Jake Johnson and Anna Kendrick. It was was called Self-Reliance. But this movie, the reviews online of this are trash. Mm -hmm. Like they have really bad reviews. I would watch a sequel of this. That's how much I enjoyed this movie. I mean, it didn't look like it was that bad. A hundred percent. I've watched the movie trailer for, I don't know what the movie is called. I think it was, I'm almost certain. I think the, the movie might be on stars right now on the, the stars app. And I'm like, mm-hmm. this is the kind of movie that 
I picture when I read reviews that I read of Jackpot. Uh huh. Because whatever the movie was, I forget what it was. I'm like, this is garbage. How do people watch this? And then I read the reviews for Jackpot, and I'm like, this makes no sense. This was a very funny, enjoyable movie. So, and there was even, like, a a fourth wall sort of joke. Not fourth wall, but, like, Uh it's one of those, like, if you know, you know sort of jokes. Yeah. But I enjoyed it. Check it out on Amazon Prime. Another movie that just came out with a bunch of bad reviews is The Union on Netflix. Which Why stars that familiar? it stars Halle, Ber- Halle Berry and uh, Mark Wahlberg. Uh. Wahlberg's character gets sucked into a world of spies by his high school sweetheart, who's played by Halle Berry. She recruits him for an intelligence mission. This was another movie that I liked, and I just I don't get what movie critics watch movies for. Like, what specifically makes a movie like this really bad to them? It's a spy comedy movie. There's some romance sprinkled in, and I, I, I really don't know what's not to enjoy here. Mm-hmm. I very much so enjoyed this, and I would 100% recommend it on Netflix. Well, uh, there you go. There you have it. My last shout-out goes to Celebrity Family Feud, because this week they had the WWE Superstars face off, and one former WWE Superstar... It was The Pride, Austin Theory, and L.A. Knight taking on Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, Mia Yim, and Zelina Vega. Oh, and Sonya Deville as well. The women ended up winning, but Bianca Belair and Zelina Vega, I felt so bad. They did terrible on their fast money. And they didn't even crack 100. Oh, no. Which, if you watch uh, Family Feud, you know during the fast money, you got to crack 200 to win. So, which I always hate seeing people not crack 200, but it's very much Mm -hmm. so fun to see the WWE superstars on shows like this. So I would say, check it out. I'm sure you can catch it on Hulu if you have Hulu and all in all, it was fun to see, but those are my shout outs. Now it's time for our hour. Right hour mark out moment of the week. I feel like you should kick it off. We just went from a game show. You could take us to another game show, I'm sure. Yeah, um, and especially if we don't take it there now, I'm definitely not going to remember it. But <laughs> but my mark out moment was watching Pictionary, and they had Big E and Kofi Kingston on the different teams. So I did not expect to see the both of them appearing on the game show. So that definitely made it more entertaining. So definitely seeing them on TV, I fully marked out for. Also, uh, something that took place last weekend, Triple Mania. Uh, I was not 100% not expecting at all to see Nick Nemeth be managed to the ring by one John Bradshaw Layfield. JBL. That was very crazy. So I popped for that. Uh, That whole match of Vampiros was crazy because it like, it had former um, opponents of his come back to to show up in the match. It was not really a match, but I think Mm. the more so the the mark out moment there was JBL showing up because that was one of those like, what the hell (laughs) is going on moments. So, Mm -hmm. you have any others or not really? Negative. Take it home. That was episode 707 of Mark and Out, Pro Wrestling Talk by Pro Wrestling Fans. Thank you so much for tuning in. You could check us out on Twitter at Mark and Out, at BTTG161 on all platforms, Chris Sweendog, CM Sweeney85, David PTDPT, Facebook.com slash Mark and Out, YouTube and Instagram are Mark and Out11. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Marking Out. Buy some merch. You could check us out on TikTok at Marking Out. Uh, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, YouTube, like I said. Uh, MarkingOut.com, you can listen to the podcast. iHeartRadio as well. 
rate review subscribe leave comments we very much so appreciate any sort of help you give us there and we wish you the the best best of luck in your future endeavors